So today, folks, what we're going to do is show you how to build something that I came up with on how to transfer the water from one bucket over to another when you're using one of these classifier screens, gold mining. What typically happens when you're using these classifier screens is this, is that you fill your bucket full of water, which right now water is kind of one of those valuable resources out in the desert, so I have to pack it in and I don't like seeing all the water coming out of my bucket spilling over the edge. So what happens is you fill it full of dirt, you start moving it back and forth, the water coming up through the bottom of it washes your gravel, the gravels fall through the screen and into the bucket. Obviously there's displacement taking place, that displacement pushes the water up and over the top of the rim of the bucket and out onto the ground, and like I said water is kind of out of shortage here, so I wanted to find a way to transfer that water from this bucket that I'm classifying into, into the next bucket that I'm going to use. So I'll show you really quickly the idea I came up with and how to build it. First of all, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take a bucket, just like the one you see here in front of me. And I've already done some of the measurements and gone down about three and a half inches from the bottom rim right here, made a line all the way around the bucket, and then cut it. So you can see here, I've got that bucket already cut. There's the bottom half, we're gonna to toss that away. All we want is this upper half of the bucket. I've also removed the bucket handles. There are some holes here. I pulled the bucket handle out of there. It's just flopping all over the place. Later on, you can put it back in there. Uh, the next thing you see here in the video, you see this black circle traced out right there. That is the outline of the hole that I'm gonna need to put a pressure coupling through the bucket here. So I've got this pressure coupling right here. It's gonna be a reverse thread. I'm gonna undo that, stick that part of it through the bucket just like this. Hopefully you can see that. That part of the pressure coupling is going to go right through the bucket and I'm going to take the other half of it, thread it on there. That will give us a one inch output out of the bucket here and that will go to a piece of one inch pipe right there. And then we'll take a piece of this nice broad weather stripping. It's about a two inch weather stripping. It's got a really neat angle to it. Hopefully I can hold it up there and show you some of the angle to it. We're going to use the bigger flare to the angle up over the rim of the bucket. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that all the way around that section of the bucket there that we've cut out. What that'll do is create a nice seal once it's glued on there between it and the bucket you're setting it down into. That way you know the water when you push it down in there comes out between the two buckets and just spills out and defeats the purpose of this. So what I'll have to do is glue that on, get it into place. That'll once again make a nice seal and then we can use the sifter screen from there. So let me go ahead, drill some of the holes, finish gluing this piece together. We'll show you what it looks like, then I'll bring it out in the field and test it out. Today's project was so easy that I built two of them, two different sizes so we could test it out. One of them here's got a half inch output in the background right there and this one in the foreground is a one inch output. This one here I built and it's got a much shallower screen base. It doesn't sit quite as far down into the bucket here from the rim down. So I was able to put the much smaller pipe and get the bucket rim lower down in towards the bucket here so there's a little bit less water needed on this one. But it also doesn't push the water out quite as nice because it's only a half inch output. Uh, this one over here, as you can see, I traded over and did a one inch output on that. This gave us the ability to go down quite a bit further as well for these deeper screens. Those go down about two inches into the bucket. The other one goes down about an inch. Once again, this one's got, if I can undo it here for you, it's got a nice seal all the way around the entire bucket there. Once you press that down in between the two buckets here like that, it makes a great seal. None of the water is getting out between the two of them, forcing the water once again up into the pipe out the pipe and into your other bucket through displacement. So I've added two final pieces to this to make it function perfectly. Based on the design, originally if you had put your screen down in there and filled it with water, the water would just come out through the pipe and drop into the bucket and never actually reach up into your screen. So by adding two elbows, so you see one over here and you can see one right here, and two section of pipe off of those, you see one there and one coming down right here. So if I want the water to actually come all the way up to the top rim of the bucket here, I can adjust this by just bringing it down just a little bit to about right there and the water will stay right below the rim and pour out of here before pouring up over the edge. If I want to make sure the water is sealed in there I can turn it upright because this is just slightly higher than the edge of this rim allowing it to work on uneven slopes a little bit better and you can always adjust for the slope by just adjusting the height right here. And I'll show you that in action here in just a moment when we demonstrate it. Uh, another part here that you see is this elbow going down to that piece of pipe and what that will allow us to do is drain the water in this all the way down to below the actual rim level of the primary catch bucket down here. And I'll show you that in action in just a moment. And to drain it all we're going to do is turn this all the way upside down and once the siphon action starts to flow, 
flow will grab all the way through down to here and pull the water all the way down below our bucket level, making sure that when we pull this out, the water just doesn't spill over the rim. Um, and I'll show you that here in a moment. So once again, we'll turn that upright and get this going. All right, I wanna give you a quick demonstration of the displacement-based uh, classifying screen system water saver that I've got here. I've got water all the way up past our screen level in here. I'm gonna grab some of this gravel I've got over here. We can add it into the bucket and as the displacement from the gravel falling through the screen happens, you're gonna watch the water come out this side and I'm gonna also show you how we can drain that bucket down all the way below the height of our primary catch bucket. So here we go, let's grab some gravel and give it to the system here. And you notice already water starting to come out. Some of that gravel is making its way right through the screen there. You can see already the water starting to come out of the bucket through our displacement. I give that a little bit of a turn. You should be able to see quite a bit more start coming out of there. Now if I still see a little bit coming over my edge, I can bring that down just a little bit further, lowering our water level inside of our system once again. Give that a shake. And there, all the water being displaced by that gravel now, instead of being wasted out the sides, is going into my next bucket. So once again here, see a little more gravel. And there you go, continually running out. So one of the neat things about this is, is once you're done, you're ready to pull this up out of your bucket, you're ready to transfer over and set it into your next bucket. What you do is go ahead and pull out your screen, we'll get rid of any of the sands in there, and then turn this pipe right here completely upside down, and through siphon action, it'll drain this bucket well down below the height of our primary catch bucket. So here we go. And then now that's turned all the way down, we just give that a moment and it's going to drain our bucket down well below the height we need. So none of that extra water that's up higher than our primary catch bucket's lip is being wasted once I remove this. See the nice flow of water coming out of there? So real quick here, I'll just show it to you off of the stand so you can see it happening. There's the water level inside of that tank. Draining into that bucket there, and there was the gurgle. So that's where our siphon would stop. And now you can see just how much of that water drained out of our upper rim here, and that way none of it will be wasted when I remove that from our lower catch bucket. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Tesalonian.